Good morning and welcome to worship here on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. As you will notice or may have noticed, um, Joe is not at the organ this morning. He is on a well-deserved vacation and we have with us our supply organist and friend of the congregation, Deb Breeder. Welcome, Deb, and we appreciate you playing and serving this morning. In your bulletin, if you look at the coming week, uh, we have a number of um, meetings on the agenda. So if you would like to be a part of them, please take note. If you already um, have them on your calendar, wonderful. Uh, tonight, we begin with a planning meeting for our second annual community spaghetti dinner fundraiser um, for the hiker community. And so that is at 7 p.m. tonight on Zoom. And as Cindy noted in the bulletin last year, our fundraiser was a wonderful success. And we would sure love to uh, be able to replicate that again this year. Um, so please join us for that. Um, even if you have never been a part of any hiker meal planning previously, you are welcome. Um, all the more hands and voices help us to make these things go smoothly. Finance Committee meets tomorrow evening, and then there is council on um, this coming Thursday at the regular meeting time of 6.30. And then already looking ahead another week, make sure you have it on your calendar that we are going to do a cookout next week following our worship service. So uh, just please bring a dish to pass. Bill will be making ice cream for us the old fashioned way. And so um, that will be our dessert for the day. Um, but please plan to stay and we'll hope that today all the rain comes through and next week we will have uh, a nice pleasant day to, uh, to gather. Um, a few other notes from the announcements um, that I do want to call your attention to. So the Worship and Music Committee met and made a recommendation that we begin or resume um, passing the peace during our worship service. And so that is going to go before the council on Thursday for a vote. This will be the first return or would be the first return of passing the peace since before the COVID times. Um, so if you do have thoughts, opinions, concerns, um, joys about any of that that you wish to share with a member of council um, to bring those uh, comments to council, please feel free to, to find a council member and pass those along. We um, made a proactive, are they there now? I didn't pay attention, the hand sanitizers. They're still in the office. So we have um, had a donation that we will have hand sanitizer in every pew. Um, if we are passing, if we do find that we will move forward with passing the piece so that hand sanitizer is available easily for everyone. Um, so as I said, if you have um, thoughts or concerns, please do see a member of council for that. And now that we have entered into the month of July, we have a number of ways that you um, can help serve our community this month. As you know, we are already well into our um, collection for headphones and backpacks for Join Hands and their school supplies um, project. And that will continue through July. We have to have the things to them by July 22nd. Um, so that will, that will end um, mid-month. But we are also going to be collecting cough drops for the Join Hands Toiletry Program and as well for our Neighbor Helping Neighbor Food Bank, we are going to collect condiments. They um, give to us or they publish what their um, item of the month is to help kind of get their warehouse stocked up and condiments is the item for July. So that would be things like ketchup, mustard, relish, mayo. Um, if any of you have seen how much mayo is at the grocery store, you may have to go in and a couple of you buy a jar of mayo. Um, but that is, that is what we'll be collecting for this month. And those things 
We'll get the Band-Aids out of there. That just didn't happen this week. Um, but then you'll have a, a bin to be able to drop those things in. And then two more things. Although Joe is not here today to um, call your attention, um, please note that we are looking to um, get the choir um, coming back together. And so um, please see him if you have questions about that. We are um, looking to replicate the very enjoyable choir ensembles that we had during Holy Week. And then as well, for the hiker meal this week, um, we are still in need of a salad donation. So if you are willing or able to donate salad, salad this week, please see Lisa or Peggy and they will get you marked down. Um, last week we had another large group um, coming through. So we still have not begun to see the, the big drop off. We expect that it will happen um, here in the next week or two, but last week was a busy week again and a very fun um, time to gather with the hikers. So that ex ex uh, gets me through my announcements. Are there any announcements in the congregation? Cindy. I, I just have two things. What, what, is that on? I just, I just, this popped into my brain. Has anybody attempted to make a donation at Community Aid using our virtual partner number? Okay, I haven't either. I was just curious. You did, and you had our number, and everything went smoothly. Perfect. Perfect. Did they? Do they tell you there how many pounds, or you? They wouldn't know that until they. Okay, all right, just curious, thank you, okay. Um, I just wanted to follow up quickly on the cookout and promote the cookout for next week. Um, if you're having a crazy busy Saturday and maybe you don't have time to make a side dish and you feel you would rather just make a donation of a pack of hot dogs and a pack of hot dog rolls, that would be wonderful, but if you could just kind of let me know uh, before I go and, because we're not quite sure how many we need to buy, but if that's something you'd rather do as opposed to <laughs> I'm looking at the person who says she never cooks. <laughs> She's shaking her head, thinking this is a good idea. So, okay, well, yeah, yeah, just please let me know if that's something that you might do. So, thanks. Any other announcements? Right behind you, Alan Velma. Well, on the 28th, can I read my? I think you're on. It's just. Oh, okay. It, it, yeah. On uh, the 28th of this month, I had great-granddaughter number nine born. I have four that are step, and then she makes number nine. Her name is Presley Jane Watts. I don't know where they picked Presley from, but it's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna let them know some information I know about that person, but anyway, she weighed eight pounds and two ounces. It was 21 inches long, so I guess she's going to be tall like her grandfather. And with that, blessings to the Whitlinger family. We continue to pray for all of the babies in our congregation. I know that the uh, Huffman's great-grandchild is continuing to get bigger, although still staying in the hospital. And we are uh, continued in our prayers for him. And... The last that I knew, um, the Hofer, um, Hofer's grandson, Simon, has been moved to Hershey, and they are still continuing to test um, that his little heart just can't quite seem to keep itself working in uh, an easy way. And so um, Stephanie and Bob continue to ask for this congregation's prayers for, for him, because that has most certainly been a, a stressful time. So, um, Sandy. I just wanted to let everybody know, if you see me on my phone, I volunteered to do the um, online usher, which if I'm at the beach, I, if I'm at the beach, I can do it from there, but I forgot I was to do it here too. So 
If you see me looking at my phone, it's because <laughs> I'm greeting everyone who is watching online. And last week I had about, there were, well, I, not me, we had about 12. So that, that was pretty good. It was amazing. Sandy has done a fantastic job as our online usher. So thank you very much for that. This was something that we have been talking about. And finally, Sandy was like, yeah, I'm just doing that. Um, and it has been great. And um, so it has helped us have a uh, much more welcoming presence um, with our online community. And so we are grateful for that. So yeah, we won't think that um, Sandy's just surfing Facebook while uh, we're in the middle of, of service. So. And it is fine. We, we can handle um, a, a, a technologically uh, connected congregation. So seeing no other announcements, let us celebrate this week with Adam Still and Quinn Mosser, who celebrate birthdays this week, and then pass along happy anniversary wishes to Clyde and Jean, as well as Sherry and Mark Britcher. We pray for a year full of blessings ahead for all of them. And with that, we are ready to begin our worship together. I encourage and ask the congregation to stand as you are able. Friends in Christ, let us gather in the shelter of God's presence. God is indeed our rock and our refuge. Into God's hands we commit our spirits, for God has redeemed us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We sing our gathering hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Author of life, you cast your glory all around us. You invade our sleep. You reveal yourself in ancient stories and get the take of common life. By the power of your spirit, come to us now, for you have called us to this place. We pray in the name of Jesus, our hope, our confidence, and your beloved Son. Amen. Congregation may be seated. First reading is from Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off. 
and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. We'll read the psalm responsibly. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, O Lord, are faithful in all your works and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Second reading is from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, Evil lies close at hand, for I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and you have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, 
and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I was scrolling through Facebook a couple of years ago, an advertisement came up for this awesome Disney handbag. It was one of the fancier bags that they sell that are often very expensive at the parks. But this one was on sale, and it was a really great deal. It had a haunted mansion design on it that I thought would be perfect for my sister Tina's birthday. She loves Halloween. She loves Disney. It was perfect. So I placed my order without another thought. I couldn't wait for it to come in. And then it came in. As I pulled this bag out of the box, it looked terrible. The bag was clearly not made well. The seams were all mismatched. And I looked at the label on the bag, which was supposed to say Dooney and Burke, only to find that it read something like Dooney and Berkey. In my haste to get a good deal, I had instead purchased a knockoff bag that could not possibly be given to my sister. So rather than a good deal, I had wasted $75. You see, expectations versus reality can be a tricky thing. Advertising, like what I fell victim to, can make you think we're getting one thing and then something entirely different arrives at your door and we're left wondering what in the world happened. Even our own hopes and expectations for things we want or things we wish would happen can get in the way. And sometimes in our fickle human nature, we can cause our own problems, declaring that we want this thing only to find ourselves miserable when that thing actually happens because we weren't really being honest with ourselves. The old saying, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it, rings very true in these times. Expectations versus reality can be a dangerous and difficult thing. Today in our gospel, Jesus sees this truth too as he confronts the religious leaders who are ridiculing and critiquing his work and ministry as they follow along behind him. Expectations versus reality are giving Jesus a whole lot of trouble. Whether Jesus is being confrontational and angry or actually poking fun at the Jewish leaders in our gospel today, he gives some pointed truth-telling. He doesn't hold back. He gives those who have been criticizing him a strong dose of their own reality. He confronts these leaders with the fact that they have been following him and watching him from a distance simply because he brings a new voice and a challenge to their perceived position and authority. He perhaps hits toward the truth that these leaders sense that there is something more to Jesus more powerful than them and out of their control. And so no matter what Jesus says, they simply reject it out of hand. Jesus accuses these leaders of not being happy with this new message, no matter who is delivering it. It's not about him at all. 
He says, when John the Baptist was out at the Jordan proclaiming the coming of the Messiah and living separately and apart, living off the land, dressed in rough and simple clothing, the leaders accused him. And then when Jesus comes, engaging with the community, eating and drinking with him, with them, they accuse him too. Rather than critique the message, they simply criticize and demean the messenger. John was filled with a demon, they said. He's crazy. Don't you see what he looks like? And this Jesus, he's a gluttonous drunk. They say, he's partying with sinners. No pious rabbi is he. The issue is that neither Jesus nor John fit the expectations of what a great prophet or king would or should look like. Neither of them came in traditional ways. Neither of them belonged to the proper class of people. And both threatened the status quo with a message that resonated with truth. Both John and Jesus engaged directly with the people, stripping away hierarchies and titles and centuries of religious traditions. Both Jesus and John laid bare the necessity of returning our hearts to God. John pointed the way to the Messiah, and Jesus stood among the people bearing witness in word and deed to the reality that the Messiah was living among them, revealing this truth in unexpected ways that the coming of God would not be controlled by human expectations. And we know unexpected disruptions, uncontrollable voices make those in power very, very nervous. Those in power often hold on to that power tightly because it affords them influence and control and wealth and position and prestige, and they do not relinquish it easily. And most certainly, they do not relinquish it to crazy, unknown, poor preachers wandering around the countryside. That isn't what their savior looks like. Neither John nor Jesus was the savior that the world thought they were promised. Those who doubted Jesus would justifiably tell us, look at the prophets. See what they say. You'll see that Jesus isn't the one. We should be able to see for ourselves that the Savior could not be Jesus. The one that was expected, the one they were expecting, the one that the prophet Zechariah proclaimed, the one we would rejoice over, this one who will be king, he comes triumphantly and victoriously. Imagine in your own mind what that would look like. And I imagine that for most of us, that triumphant king would look a whole lot like the coronation we saw over in England a couple of months ago. People in great finery with gowns and jewels and magnificent carriages led by beautiful horses, royal robes, grand processions with military parades. We would envision victory over enemies, triumph as a leader of the nation. That is the king we humans think we want. That is the type of king that will make us feel strong and dominant. The type of king that will ensure that our nation would be seen as the most powerful. For the ancient Israelites of Jesus' day, that would most certainly mean that the promised king would be one who would reestablish the throne of David and rule Israel as an independent nation, overthrowing the occupying Romans. The leaders believed if there was going to be a new king that would upend the status quo, it had better be a king they supported. 
who would ensure their power remained. That was their expectation. And that is not what they saw in Jesus. The reality of Jesus' ministry most certainly did not meet their expectations, and so they refused to listen, refused to believe that he could be the promised one. They demeaned Jesus, ridiculed and ultimately condemned him. They saw him as a threat to be removed rather than a voice to be heeded. He would not be their king and certainly not the expected Messiah. But the great irony is that Jesus did indeed fill the prophecy that Zechariah laid before us today. This triumphant and victorious king, this one who was to come, when we read more deeply and more fully, we see that Zechariah says that this king will come in humbleness and not in military power. This one who is the victorious king comes bringing peace, not war. This king will be one to command the nations with a power that is fueled by hope and not overthrow and domination. This one that is coming reflects grace and mercy and steadfast love of the God who would send him into the world in order to upend our expectations, the expectations of a world gone astray, for a world that has been mired in sin and ensnared by greed and selfishness. God has seen the suffering of this world and sent the Son as God's incarnate revelation, the one who would witness that the one who reigns is the same one who created from the beginning and is the one who lifts up those who are bowed down, bowed down by whatever it is in our life that lays heavy burdens on us. Jesus reaches out a hand across the table over a dinner among sinners and says, follow me and I will give you rest. Lay down those things that are weighing you down. Let go of those things that you hold so tightly and simply find rest in me. Jesus reveals the upside-down reality that the great master of the universe has come to change the world by freeing the world. Jesus' words reach out to us across time. Words of love and compassion. Words that see the reality of our life's struggles. Words that understand and are filled with love. Jesus has seen the hurting of this world, has felt the deep sorrow. Jesus knows the betrayal of friends and the rejection of his own work. Jesus has felt the disappointment of watching the world choose violence and hatred and division over love and caring and community over and over again. Our great and mighty Lord and King has come among us. Jesus says, when we follow him, the way becomes easy. Suffering is not gone, but we do not bear it alone. The one who would bear the cross bears our burdens too. Jesus lifts us from sin, calls us away from these things that would harm and destroy, and instead beckons us to dwell in the gentleness and humbleness of his security. At the cross and the empty tomb, God reveals the final and ultimate truth that is being revealed anew every day. Love is the greatest power in this world and reveals the complete and utter essence of the one who created us all. Love is the reality that defies every expectation and will defeat every hatred, perhaps not in the time we would expect, but in hope 
We believe that under the span of God's time, all the sin, all the hatred, all the evil will be no more. The kingdom awaits the coming of the Christ. The kingdom is growing and renewing through each of us every day as we wait in great expectation. As followers of the humble and powerful Christ, we declare our allegiance to the one who eats and drinks with sinners and outcasts, Amen. who bears good news to those who need to hear it, who hears the cries of the suffering. Jesus asks us to bear God's mercy and compassion out into the world. Jesus challenges us to lay aside our own expectations and instead dwell in the reality of our servant king, our crucified Messiah, the incarnate, holy, mysterious, and powerful one. Jesus bids us to put on that yoke. Let us follow this king, for he will lead us to peace in God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We will sing our hymn of the day.
Together, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God calls us to offer up the world's concerns and petition for others. Let us therefore pray for the church, the world, and those in need. Gracious God, you are good to all. Help us to trust your word and accept your invitation to find rest in you. We pray for your church in all of its forms that we may learn how to follow Jesus by giving rest to the weary in lives of service that are gentle and humble of heart. Hear us, O God. God of all creation, we pray for the earth and all that you have created and love. You reveal your goodness through all you have made, rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of the conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. We pray for all people, their nations and leaders, that when the burdens of war, poverty, and hunger are too much to bear, we may do our part to offer rest and peace. Hear us, O God. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Among those known to us, we pray for Shirley, Alan, Pat, Audrey, Arlene, Sarah Jane, Roger, Charlotte, Joanne, John, Jack, Kathy, Millie, Jerry, Peggy, Roxy, Karen, and Evan. Hear us, O God. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O God. Into your hands we place the welfare of all for whom we pray. We trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus taught. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The hard work of civil society, ensuring that all citizens have voice and a place, can be wearying. We aren't alone in our efforts as allies and advocates of those who have been excluded or unheard. Jesus goes with us shouldering the burden and helping to form beloved community. We will now worship God with our offering. Congregation may be seated.
Let us pray. Jesus said, truly I tell you, those who offer a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple will not lose their reward. Beloved, let us offer to God the gifts of our lives and labor. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who are wandering still. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
For those who will commune in your pews or at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. People of God, as you leave this place, Leave fear behind. Leave with a glad heart. Leave with conviction that all people you meet in the coming days are beloved of God, as you are also. Rejoice and give thanks. And may the grace of God the Father bless you with peace. May the love of Christ God's Son sustain you in joy. And may the power of the Holy Spirit give you courage this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. We sing our sending hymn.
We at Christ Lutheran Church are <clears throat> Go in peace, the living word dwells in you.